Hey there, this is Seth Schaefer from Team Just Cause Robotics, and today's video is a continuation of my Norwalk Havoc February 6th event recap, featuring my 12 pound robot Draconid. Draconid was built in late 2019 for February 2020's Motorama event, the last event I attended pre-COVID. To learn more about the design, check out my design overview video linked down below. At Motorama, I competed with Draconid as a full combat hobby weight, but unluckily ended up only fighting wedge bots, and due to Draconid's lack of a drivability, it lost two of those fights. The driving turned out to suck primarily because I was using O-rings as tires, so to upgrade the drive power, I simply needed to make wheels that weren't utter garbage. I recently made a whole tutorial video on how to cast your own polyurethane rubber wheels around 3D printed hubs with 3D printed molds, and with the cost spread over many wheels it's pretty affordable with the rubber being about $40. In that video, I used cheap crappy liquid dyes, but afterwards I switched to using shiny mica powder pigments which look and work way better. I have a ton of other handy tutorial videos in my back catalog you guys should really check out on my channel page and take a look. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notifications about all my new videos. I've also gotten a lot of recent comments and messages from new viewers asking about things I've answered in past videos, so be sure to take a look around. But I digress, back to the video at hand. Next up we have Draconid vs the Air Cannon Bodge Bot Top Hatinator, a joke bot consisting of a potato gun taped to an RC car. They were just here to have a good time and before our fight they asked me to rip their bot to pieces. Draconid, with its 6.5 inch saw blade spinning at about 6000 RPM, was happy to oblige. Overhead cam, there we go, nice shot. Kyle, my level of hype right now is so high. I can't Eight, even tell you. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight robots fight. Yeah! There goes the, the cannon. It seems to have slightly missed its target. <laughs> and now the saw on Draconid taking apart one of those wheels. Oh, this Draconid is, is it's, it's you know, just helping them take apart the robots, you know. This is much more damage than you normally see in a sportsman fight. Saws are usually allowed in a sportsman fight. You'll get some fun sparks from them usually. Um, but in this particular case, you Ooh. know, the bot's mostly plastic and some cardboard and some tape. So the saw is actually a very damaging weapon in this particular case. All right. I'm I don't seeing see a whole any, lot of movement. Yeah, I think we need to get that show motion bar up yeah, here on the screen if we can. Yeah, show motion bar, yeah. Ooh. There we go, time to get moving. All right, Kyle, that that projectile went all the way across the arena, though. It, okay. it, it missed its target. Yeah. I, I've got to talk to the And that's it, builder. that's the end. That is a knockout. Draconid wins this fight, advances. Top Patinator fires the cannon. Misses right. their shot. They took their shot, though. I, I, I've got to talk to Davis from Top Hatinator. I would love to see this robot up close. Excellent. Very excited to meet Davis. I want to see this. Oh, I got to see this. I love that you're so fanboyed out about this Are bot. Are you kidding me? I love, I love innovative bots. I love innovative ideas. All right, can you put it right here? Can you? Yeah, just right here in front. Perfect. Yeah, right, right in front Davis? of that. Who's Davis? Davis, Davis, Davis. All right. What was, what was the thinking behind this robot, you know? Well, we wanted to hit him, but uh, didn't happen. Yeah, here. Oh, sorry. Um, so, it, you know, this thing is long. What 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 is the length <laughs> here? I mean, this has got to be three and a half, four feet long. Yeah, it's pretty long. Uh, the bevel's most of the length, and then the air tank is the rest of it. Yeah. Now, I, I, saw, I saw a bike pump back there in, yeah, in the Yeah, we uh, pumped up to 80 PSI, the main tank. I love it. All right, and let's let's see the uh, the projectile. Wow, this thing is really heavy. Wow, this has like super heft, and it looks like those those are batteries on the front. Look at that. <laughs> I love it. Got a little bit of fletching on the back too. Kyle, so check this out. So what was the idea of the uh, of the the warhead being nine volt batteries? What's so, the idea uh, there? They are uh, they were dead, so we wanted more weight. And that, uh, <laughs> that's perfect. That's about it. <laughs> Yeah. So I'm curious, are, are you fans of like Double Jeopardy on, on BattleBots? I mean, they're the other kind of cannon robot out there? Oh yeah, I saw Double Jeopardy in the main cell. Yeah, that is incredible. This thing is so cool. I love it. I love innovative thinking. And uh, hopefully you can get this fixed, you know? Yeah. And uh, 
love to see it again here in Norwalk. You're already at the top of the loser's bracket, so good luck to you putting this bot back together, and we'll oh, see man. you uh, in the next round, I guess. Yeah. Thank you, guys. All right. Uh, back to this guy. So it's uh, air cannon with uh, wheels mounted on it. The wheels got uh, pretty badly destroyed, though. So you can actually see this wheel well. The wheel frames, and then you can actually see the internals of it now. Uh, and then the servo motor, you managed to cut through. Oh, man. Uh, and then we got the... I actually wonder if that still works. <laughs> that does not still work. I wanted oh, to man. cut it off your... Uh, oh, a wire fell out. Okay. So this is the relay that controls the air cannon solenoid? This controls the air cannon and the wheel. Yep. So this controls both the air cannon and the wheel. It controls everything. So these guys had to borrow this battery from me. It's actually yeah. the same exact battery that's in Jack and it, which I just used to destroy it, because they didn't have a battery powerful enough with them to run their solenoid. And then you also cut out the uh, safety loop. Oh, oops. Well, yep, that's uh, pretty firmly destroyed. It actually didn't go through the pipe, I'm surprised. Well, this right here, it's uh, it got a... deep. Yeah, no, that's unusable now. <laughs> that would definitely explode. <laughs> so, uh, did oh, I do anything to this? You did. You cut it in a couple places. Oh, man. Yeah, you really... Uh, this is steel, too. Holy shit. Yeah. That would explain why the carbide teeth on my car are gone. That's awesome. Uh, Take that off. Yeah, you pretty seriously messed it up. <laughs> well, that was a fun fight. Thank you so much. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Next up, we have Draconid fighting in the Sportsman semifinals against P12. P12 is built and driven by Brandon Zelinski, the captain of the BattleBot P1 this year. P12 is essentially a scaled down version of P1. Two, one, fight robots, fight! P12 attempting the box rush but not able to get underneath Draconid. Draconid's little claw wedges doing a great job getting underneath P12, keeping them away. And as such, Draconid able to do a little bit better pushing on P12. Oh, and we're getting a little bit of saw action from Draconid. And there we go, nice flip from P12. P12 getting them up on their side. Oh. What? It happened! That is not where Draconid wants to be. Draconid, we're going to need you to show us some motion, my friend. You are in a rough place over there. Are you able to get out? P12 showing them a little bit of time. Oh, the, the slow show motion bar has started. And we're getting down to five, four, three, two, one. That's a knockout in a sportsman class fight. Uh... Draconid has flat sides, and obviously it's possible to get stuck on them, though the torque from the saw has been able to free it from that position in the past. I think there were a bunch of screws and stuff strewn all over the floor that I saw before the fight. I'm not sure for sure that Draconid got stuck on one of them, but you can see from the close-up angles in the shot where Draconid's on its side that it's like leaning back towards the wall even while it's immobilized, and I think that that's most likely because it got stuck on top of some debris or a screw or something. So the saw wasn't able to free it, and I had stupidly forgotten to tape something to the sides to prevent it from getting stuck in this position. Um, I don't really know why the house bot Fluffy didn't free me, but yeah, I got stuck and I lost real quick. But at least this meant that I had time to tape some stuff to the side of the bot and focus on what I needed to do to get ready for a rematch in the finals. Next up, Draconid takes on P12 again for the 12 pound Sportsman Finals. This meant that I had only one shot to win because I had already lost once, but in a normal dumb elimination tournament, I would have actually had to beat P12 two times in a row in order to win the final. However, because this was very close to the end of the event and both myself and Brandon were super tired, we both agreed that we would have this be a single elimination final. So the winner of this fight took the trophy, which didn't exist for 12 pound sportsman division, home. Draconid, he's got something on the side of his bot there. What's going on with that? Yeah, I think it's uh, maybe he's taped some material to the side of his robot. Looks so that... like it, yeah. A little bit, of, a little bit of gaff tape love, trying to avoid that problem they had in the last fight with P12. And we did notice at the beginning of that fight with the P12, Draconid was able to get underneath their wedge. That's happening again in this fight.
grinding away at the front end of, of P12, dragging it. Getting those saw points. Now, saws are allowed in sportsman competition, but the tip speed has to be kept low. There's no high kinetic weapons allowed. So they are scoring points every time they grind away at their front wedge, but not doing any significant damage. Just some fun sparks coming off of it. But obviously the saw is spinning fast enough to do some damage. Just ask Top Hatinator. Mm, yep. All right, we're coming up on the halfway point of this match. No clear winner so far. We've seen great driving from both of these, uh, these builders. Absolutely. Jockeying for position, trying to figure out a way to get underneath the side of each other. Oh. Nice. Dracon had just launched itself off of the ramp that is P12 right there. Both bots coming in for contact. Dracon had going saw first into this situation, hoping to get those damage points to show the judges. We're now in the last 50 seconds or so of this fight. have not really seen the flipper be a factor so far. But you got to imagine it's going to factor in how the judges think about this fight. Draconid seems to be a little bit stuck. Fluffy gives him a little bump. That was the least aggressive Fluffy action we've seen all day. Yeah, we've got Joe Fabiani behind the sticks of oh, uh, Fluffy. Just a gentle little push. P12 driving, doing donuts. We're coming at the last 10 seconds of this fight. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. That's the end of the fight. Weapons off. Please drive to the door if you can. A 12 pound sportsman, and uh, it's going to go to the judges. Whew, tough one to call. Who's feeling uh, very opinionated? Yeah, Zach is. I can see it all over your face, Zach. Yeah, for sure. Let's kick us off. Uh, I don't know about very opinionated. Uh, here we have a match with two sportsman robots with no significant damage and not a ton of control. Um, I would say P12 probably had a little bit of an edge on control. When they went head to head, it was usually a toss up, but he ended up on the side a little bit more often. We never saw the lifter I don't even know if it was working in that fight. I think he could have had a little bit bigger advantage by using the lifter as a horn, basically, as a wedge stop uh, to prevent Draconid from skipping up over the top. Uh, we never really saw that, but Draconid saw and never really did anything but make some sparks. Uh, both of them are very fast. I didn't see a clear edge on either side there. I think I have to give this one to P12, but P12. It was close. All right, Zach, uh, Zach is voting for P12 here in the finals. All right, uh, can uh, I go next? <laughs> David, let's let's hear it. Oh, a third um, split, come on, do it. I, I, I think we're gonna have a split here. Um, I agree with a lot of what you said. Um, however, I did notice that Draconid did one thing that I really liked, which was when he went Wedgelet first into P1, um, as you guys mentioned, he clearly went underneath. He was winning the ground game. However, yeah. he decided not to do that every time. He took the more aggressive strategy and turned around and led with the saw. I know the saw didn't actually do anything, but the aggressive intent of that, uh, I really liked. Um, he could have just sat back and gone wedge lit first the entire match, and he probably would have ended up at least stalemating P12 uh, in like a low ground war. Um, however, he decided to turn the bot around, risk going up and over P12, and uh, lead with his uh, active weapon instead. Um, so I think that gives him the slight edge. It's a really close match. I don't think it's clearly one or the other, but um, I think that gives a slight edge to Draconid. Wow. Aggressive Intent. That's uh, the name of my next bot. Aggressive Intent yeah. is a great name for That's a bot. Great. I got to say, I agree with David and his assessment of this fight, but uh, the judge's decision is in. Yeah. All right. It looks like uh, we're headed toward a split decision. Don, uh, which, uh, which one of these judges here 
swayed you in their uh, argument? Well, let me start off by saying it was a close match, as it's already been said. But uh, yeah, Dragonid did good, good, uh, good at stopping P12 and getting under it at times. P12 remained aggressive, staying on him and stuff. But there was one point in the match where P12 was able to, or Dragonid used P12 as a ramp. And that was the only time that was a significant point. Um, I'm gonna say I'm, I'm gonna agree with Zach and say P12 based on what he said. P12. Wow. Okay, Brandon Zelinsky. Amazing. Good job, judges. Okay. Thank you, judges. That was that was not a tough an easy one. one to that, call. that was a tough one to call. Yeah, that was, that was a tough one. All right, so P12 wins the 12 pound sportsman. 12 pound sportsman tournament, Brandon Zelinski. I thought I had a post fight interview with Brandon after this fight, but I think that I lost the footage of that somehow. So we'll just have to stick with these damage photos of what P12 looked like after the fight. Obviously, not so much damage that it caused any functional problems for P12, other than the fact that I, or the lifter either just wasn't working or broke at the beginning of the fight. Um, but. Draken did end up not winning on damage points for whatever reason, and I was kind of losing the control battle a little bit, though mainly because I couldn't drive anywhere without my forks embedding themselves in all of the ruts that the 30 pound robots had dug up in the floor. Unfortunately, this meant that I couldn't really control the fight. If I had just driven at him with the forks the whole time, he probably would have never gotten under me, but that was pretty lame to do with a robot that has a saw on it, so I tried using it as an undercutter and it didn't really go my way. After the fight, Brandon and I traded trophies, with me giving him the saw that I'd used in the fight against him, signed of course, and him giving me this signed fork from P12, which had gotten damaged decently by Draconid's saw blade, in the process of losing all its carbide teeth. That just about covers everything I wanted to say about Norwalk Havoc on February 6th. It was a lot of fun, and even though Draconid didn't perform amazingly, I still think that it's vastly improved over how it was a year ago at Motorama. Next time, I'm probably going to be showing some sorts of videos relating to Mini Mulcher, and as I'm gearing up to be moving across state lines, I'm probably not going to be releasing content super regularly over the next four to six weeks, but I'll try and get some videos out here and there that may not be as long or as well produced as this one is, but they should still be something that's of interest of anyone who loves robot combat. The next one that I really have in mind will feature Mini Mulcher, so keep your eye out for that. And again, if you like this video, make sure to click like. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon. And as always, thanks for watching.